just as a disclaimer to our audience, the real truth about health does not have any knowledge about uh, medicine. So that is not something we can get involved with. And you should speak to whoever's appropriate to get your advice on that. Um, so um, what about colonics during a fast? You know, we you get constipated. Um, should you do no, not, not colonics, colonics or enemas? Should we do enemas during a fast? Yeah. So the best way to avoid, so the short answer is probably not on a water only fast, possibly so on a modified fast. The longer answer is if you want to avoid constipation, eat plants that are high in fiber for the like three days or so before you start the fast. Fiber, as we know, moves stuff through us quickly. You do not want animal products. You do not want highly processed foods. You don't want a bunch of oil. Um, you may not even want things like nuts and, and avocado in there. You want, you know, beans and, uh, you know, kale and potatoes and sweet potatoes and things like that in your diet for those. Hopefully they're in your diet all the time. But if they're not for the three days before you fast, eat those. That way, when you um, when you stop eating, um, it should help move things through much more quickly. OK. There is a long history of using enemas for fasting in Europe. All right. And their basic idea, I think, is, look, we're we're kind of not eating, but we're kind of eating. Right. We're giving them 250 calories a day and broths, a little juice, maybe a teeny bit of honey in the tea or something. And um, that's going into the stomach. But there's not a ton moving stuff all the way down through the system. And we're worried that stuff is going to, you know, get into the intestines and just kind of sit there. Uh, and their clinical observation is that when that happens, people experience more headaches, more fatigue, sometimes more nausea. And in their uh, estimation, when they give people enemas, which they tend to do approximately every two days uh, during a fast, uh, when they do that, People, you know, have more energy. Uh, they uh, their nausea goes away. They don't they don't have headaches. So so they do that, and they've done that for you know a hundred years or so uh, with what they believe is good results. We don't have any studies to say. The concern about fasting doctors who do water only fasting is that you first of all you don't have that stuff in there. <laughs> um, constantly coming in as you do during a modified fast, okay? So um, yeah, you have your last few meals or whatever, but they will work their way through just fine 99.9% .9 of the time is what the fasting doctors in the US tell me. Um, and their concern is if we squirt liquid into the intestines, we are going to flush stuff out, even if there's no food in there, we're going to flush stuff out that may be, let's say, electrolytes. And if we're flushing your electrolytes out, well, is that going to give you a high blood pressure? Is that going to cause your kidneys or your liver to malfunction? And, and the basic idea that, that they have said to me, and it makes sense, is like, look, this fasting mechanism, our body's exquisite equilibrium that we go into when we don't have food for a while, was developed over a billion years of evolution. Some of these some of these uh, fasting mechanisms, uh, the repair mechanisms in particular, but other stuff as well, we share with yeast with whom we last had a common ancestor a billion years ago. So they say, look, nature has designed us to fast. Why should we go meddling with the fast with this enema that may change the balance of many things inside of us uh, when we have no reason to believe that we know better than nature? So in the absence of that knowledge and in the absence of any compelling evidence that water only fasters do better with an enema, they say avoid it. Should we brush our teeth during fasts? <laughs> it's quite the question because quite often your breath is going to reek horridly. <laughs> um, it's called acetone breath. Uh, acetone is one of the ketone bodies and we all know acetone from, you know, paint remover and nail polish remover and so on, right? So often the breath is just disgusting. Um, and, um, so, um, again, the modified fasting doctors say, sure, brush your teeth. I mean, we're feeding you anyway, 250 calories a day. What's a little bit of, you know, toothpaste. Um, the doctors in North America say, no, um, your body will absorb tiny amounts, but it will absorb tiny amounts of that toothpaste. Uh, and why throw that into your system, uh, and potentially throw off some of the repair mechanisms 
if we don't have to. So if you want to brush your teeth, if you really desperately do, do want to um, do it without toothpaste. Um, and you would actually be surprised that how, how much just brushing with water uh, can clean up the sort of foul smell in your mouth. Um, and I, I tried that for the first time on my 29 day fast and actually just felt that it was fantastic. It was the first time I hadn't brushed my teeth with tooth, toothpaste during a fast. And uh, from now on, I'm going to do it with just water because it worked just fine. So a lot of information we get is we test things on ourselves. It's a very slow way to learn and it's not ideal. And sometimes someone gets sick and they have one of 50 different diseases. And someone says to them, why don't you try water fasting? So the question is, instead of each person listening to this, having to test it out and find out how it affects all the different diseases, is there any data of the million people who have type two diabetes, the million people with obesity, the million with cancer, with heart disease, with kidney disease, who go on a long a water fast, let's assume, I don't know how long, 10 to 20 days. Do we know, does it have a meaningful result or change to any of these diseases so we don't have to experiment on our own? Is there already people who've tried this and could tell us what effect it has? Yeah, short answer is no. Uh, we just don't have studies that large. You have to remember that fasting has been a research ghetto for ever since scientific research has evolved. No one has wanted to touch it. It was the field of quacks and kooks. Uh, and frankly, even though it has blossomed in the last decade, it is still largely that among most conventional scientists and certainly most conventional doctors. So we do not have large studies. We simply don't. What we do have is the clinical experience of fasting doctors who over the last, oh, I would say 75 years in particular have done a very good job of reporting, uh, you know, uh, fasting seems to work wonders for autoimmune diseases. It seems to do very effective against type two diabetes if the diabetes hasn't gone too long. It seems to do very good against some aspects of cardiovascular disease like high blood pressure and angina and so on. So, you know, it, it, it's a long list of diseases that fasting can help. It's, I mean, if I had to rattle it off, it would be five or six dozen different diseases. And, and the reason is this, it's because fasting is not working in one cell. It's not making these cellular repairs in one type of cell. It's not making it in, in one organ. It's not making it in one corner of the body. It's making it in making these repairs in virtually, uh, you know, I don't want to say virtually every cell, but the vast majority of cells in the vast majority of organs all over our body. So it can repair and reverse a ton of disease. However, you're absolutely right on. There are some diseases it doesn't seem to do very well for at all. And it's useful to know those, all right? So, um, but, you know, that's another list. I will give you an example though. Fasting, we have case reports that are very compelling. In fact, I start my book with one. that fasting seems to work very well for a form of lymphoma known as follicular lymphoma. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a liquiform cancer. Fasting doesn't seem to do nearly as well, may in fact, in some cases, make worse solid cancers, all right? So, you know, if you have cancer of the pancreas or cancer of the liver, or if you have a melanoma or something like that, we don't have any evidence that fasting is going, going to, to help you. We do, however, I'll just say as an aside, we do have evidence that fasting in combination with more traditional therapies like chemotherapy and radiation, fasting seems to enhance the chemotherapy and radiation at its tumor killing work. And it seems to protect the body at the same time from the assaults of chemotherapy and radiation. But, you know, I, I, I'm saying all this in order to give you a sense of it's, you know, we have, uh, uh, we have a, a large amount of discussion of this in the fasting literature, which is not a vast body, but it amounts to doctors simply saying, people came to my clinic, fasted for this, and they got better. Does it seem to be help cancer patients or to seem to hurt them? Well, we really don't know. Um, if you were doing fasting alone, so we don't, we don't have enough data to say about, you know, in humans, but so that one of the leading researchers in this, in this field of fasting and cancer is named Walter Longo. He's a professor at the University of Southern California. And, and his line after fasting, I don't know how many mice and how many 
rats and um, you know who who knows what other kinds of animals in his in his lab was yeah you might save one but you're going to kill one so we can't possibly recommend something that's going to uh, that we know if we tell you okay you've got pancreatic cancer you should fast for it we know so number of people are going to die from that advice so we can't give that advice now is it possible that that some other people with pancreatic cancer would uh, benefit from fasting might even um, you know contribute seriously to a remission yeah it's possible but we just don't have the evidence that would you know merit making so bold a, a statement as that okay if you'd like to ask a question please raise your hand david would like to ask a question where are you from hi i'm hi i'm david from uh, massachusetts and i have two quick questions first of all follow up on uh, steve's question about supplements uh, there are many supplements that it's recommended to take on empty stomach. And because of it, you will get more, more benefit out of them. So for the daily fasting, does this supplement consider disturbing the fasting? So this is the first question, because if, if, if they are considering disturbing the, the fasting, it's kind of narrow your or ex expanding the, the, the window that you are eating. The second question is, uh, there is a company that doing fasting mimicking diet called Prolon, and they they give you a kit of um, uh, their food for five days, and they claim they that when you eat their food, it's you get the the, the benefit of like you know Prolon fasting. I would like to ask if you're familiar with this, and what are your thoughts about this? Thank you. You bet. Good questions. So I'll take that second question first. Um, Prolon is a company that was actually started by Walter Longo, this USC professor who I ha had just mentioned. There is excellent research behind it showing that people who eat this, and, and what it is, is it's a, it's a fasting mimic mimicking diet, uh, which is to say it's actual food, it's soups and little nut and date bars and things like that. Uh, and you eat it for, you know, the ideal is you're eating it for, I believe it's five days, once a month. And the uh, research that has been done on it shows that if people do that for, let's say, three months, uh, they will find um, enormous sizable improvements in their uh, metabolic disorders. Their uh, cholesterol, if it's high, will go down. Their blood pressure, if it's high, will go down. Uh, if they're insensitive to insulin, they will grow more sensitive to insulin and so on. So, um, so it is a, I think it is very good. I do think, and I take Walter to task a little bit about the, for this in my book. I do think he overpromises. He has he has said it is just as good as fasting. Well, in order to design Prolon, what they did was they looked at four specific metrics, uh, and I'm not sure if I can recall what they were, but four specific metrics of fasting. One was um, how much glucose do you have in you. One was you know are you running on ketones. And I think one was. Uh, what is your level of IGF-1? That's a hormone that's a, uh, uh, it's a useful hormone in many ways, but too much of it uh, can contribute to disease. And then there's a related binding protein called IGF-1 binding protein that they looked at as well. And they said, if we, if we bring all these markers, these four markers, all right, into the parameters, into the range that they would get to if you were actually fasting, then we can say that we have mimicked fasting with this diet. And I think that's partly true. They have mimicked those aspects of fasting and those aspects of fasting are, are probably surrogates for others as well. Uh, and so they have, um, you know, mimicked, you know, more than just those four variables. It's true. The body has thousands and thousands of variables that change when fasting. We don't know what they all are. So to claim that you're going to be, uh, you know, you're going to get as much restorative benefit with an FMD, a fasting diet, as you will from an actual fast, I just don't think the evidence supports that at all. And, and I wish you would stop saying that. Um, but is it useful? Absolutely. Not everyone wants to fast. That's why he designed it, because he was running into uh, opposition from people fasting, and for that matter, from their, their doctors. So he he's created this thing where he can get both doctor and patient on board. It's a great tool to have out there. For your other question, okay, so as I understand it, what you're asking is, so I do my daily eating period, 
my eating window closes, but I'm supposed to take this supplement on an empty stomach. So if I, if I, you know, wait two hours or something till my stomach is empty, uh, am I breaking my fast by doing that? And that's a very good question. The short answer is you may be. The longer answer is the best research we have says if you take five calories or more, you will break that fast. Okay, so five calories is one and a half grapes. It's a teaspoon and a half of soy milk. All right. So if your supplement has five calories or more, yep, you're breaking your fast. You're 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 ending your fasting period. You're pushing back your overnight repairs uh, further into the night. Um, the more complicated answer is your supplement may be fewer than five calories. All right. But if it's got um, other properties that interrupt your metabolism, say it has caffeine in it, which we know interrupts a fast, you will be interrupting your fast. Now, the catch is it may be a small interruption. We don't have the research to say. So we know that, that there's an interruption with some things, but we just don't know how big it is. And, and we don't have the specifics to say, okay, the supplement with this ingredient, it breaks it this much. Supplement with that ingredient breaks it that much. Elizabeth, would you like to ask a question or where are you from? Um, do you hear me? I'm say, yes. say it again. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Hello. I'm from Quebec, Canada. So actually I wanted to know if you have, uh, any research on fasting and mental disorder, like depression or anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I spent a whole chapter uh, of my book on it. So it turns out that when we think of fasting, most people think about most doctors, fasting doctors over the years have talked about fasting for somatic disorders, disorders of the body, not disorders of the mind. Now, of course, you can't separate them, but for ease of conversation, I'm going to talk about it that way. So we have very little uh, evidence, uh, certainly in the U.S. and the West, um, because uh, uh, fasting doctors just simply didn't fast patients for this reason. However, I mentioned earlier, I had uh, a terrible health crisis in my 40s. It was chiefly psychiatric and neurological disorders. And it's a long story, and I think we're running out of time. So what I will say is, is that um, I did a fast four years ago simply to help myself lose a little bit of weight. When I did that, I noticed that my psych psychiatric disorders were going away. And eventually during this fast, they went away completely. Uh, and I tell the story of that in the book. This led me to look into the what research did exist. And as I say, there's very little, but there is, however, a wealth of clinical experience. It's unfortunately all in Russia. So it turns out there was a fasting doctor named Yuri Nikolaev, uh, who in the Soviet Union from the 1940s to the 1990s fasted extremely severely mentally ill people, mostly schizophrenics, mostly inpatients at his very large, very prestigious Moscow psychiatric hospital. And to cut to the chase, uh, of these 10,000 patients or so that he fasted over this period, uh, he reported, and I believe very credibly, uh, success rates uh, approaching, I think it was about two thirds of his patients when he put them on a long-term water-only fast, the typical fast was about a month, uh, not only got better, but were able to maintain their recovery for years after they left the hospital. So it's a, it's a completely underexplored area. I do discuss the evidence, what little there is, the research in some detail in my book. Uh, if you have a, a psychiatric problem or a loved one who does, uh, or a neurologic problem, uh, I, I would highly recommend um, considering that. Again, uh, in that case, absolutely fasting under um, supervision would be the way to go. So if anyone would like to follow up um, with Steve, you can go to our website and you can find out about his book and his website or how to get in touch with him. Steve, um, you can unmute the mic also. We'd all like to thank you, Steve. For our Been nice to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Steve. Thank you. You're amazing. This way to get over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.